just like the unusual weather phenomena that are happening around us. We are living in an environment where the worries of life are becoming worse than ever before, according to the prophecy in the Bible. At this time, no one should be left behind or fall behind on the way to the kingdom of heaven. Right? Therefore, we should study God's word more and more, fully engrave God's laws, decrees, and regulations, and pray earnestly so that we can all enter the eternal kingdom of heaven. We must also spend time practicing our unity and harmony and faith and putting God's teachings into practice so that we can become the salt and light of the world. Today, with the sermon titled, The Temple of God and God's Regulation, let us find out why are all the laws, decrees, and regulations of the New Covenant that we are keeping today so important and precious? What does God say about every ordinance that we keep? It will be a sign which allows us to enter the Kingdom of God. That is why in Exodus chapter 31, God said that the Sabbath day is a sign. Also, what does God put on our forehead on the Passover day? When we think about the fact that God put the seal on us as His people, all the regulations we are keeping today are God's great gifts to mankind in order for God to clearly distinguish whether they are heavenly people or not, we should engrave this in our hearts once again. Today, let us study the Word of God together with a sermon titled, The Temple of God and God's Regulation. Isn't there a regulation to serve God in God's temple where we worship Him? We must always engrave this simple and clear principle deeply in our hearts. There are so many false Christs and false prophets in the world. We are now living in a world full of lies. Therefore, we should ask ourselves, is the way we are walking the right path to the kingdom of heaven or not? Shouldn't we have the wisdom and ability to distinguish this matter? Thus, we must know what regulations are being kept in the temple where we are now. We must discern this clearly. If the regulation of serving God is observed, the temple is indeed a blessed temple. If a regulation other than God's regulation is carried out, it is certain that another God is being served. That is why you and I must confirm this fact once again through the Bible that the path we are walking now is the right path towards the kingdom of heaven. In order to do this, we are studying God's word, the water of life, every Sabbath day, and receiving God's grace through the Holy Spirit, aren't we? Today we need to think about this matter carefully with a sermon titled, The Temple of God and God's Regulation. Will the Passover be held in the synagogue of Satan? Will the Sabbath day be kept in the synagogue of Satan? Never. These regulations can never be kept in there. Then what will be kept in the temple where we worship God? It is needless to say that the Sabbath day, which is God's commandment, the Passover, which is God's commandment, and the new covenant, which is God's commandment, will be kept in the temple of God, right? If there is a temple that we are not familiar with, we should ask, what regulations are being kept in that temple? If we take a closer look at the temple, we can distinguish whether it is the dwelling for demons mentioned in the book of Revelation or the holy temple to serve God, can't we? Let us take a look at the Word of God to distinguish this matter by using the specific method. Let us turn to Revelation chapter 18.
Let us take a look at Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. After this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven. He had great authority, and the earth was illuminated by his splendor. With a mighty voice he shouted, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling for demons and a haunt for every impure spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable animal. What does God tell his people who are in such a place to do? God proclaims by saying, My people, come out of there. In chapter 18, verse 4, it says, Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. For her sins are piled up to heaven, and God has remembered her crimes. It is written as a dwelling for demons and a haunt for every impure spirit. Its outer appearance seems gorgeous and enticing to people's eyes. However, when we look inside, it is the dwelling for demons. How can we know its true identity? When we look inside the place with the method, that is, God's regulation of the new covenant such as the Passover, there is no regulation to serve God in that place. Is there the Sabbath day to serve God? Is there the Passover? Is there the new covenant? Are there any feasts? It is a place where no regulations of God can be found. Let us turn to Revelation, chapter 3. In chapter 3, verse 9, it says, I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. In verse 9, this place is also referred to as the synagogue of Satan. How can we distinguish between the gathering of Satan and the gathering of God's people? We can easily distinguish by looking at what regulations they are keeping and what laws they are following. In this way, we need to know how to discern whether this is the place to come out of or the place to enter. It is written that there are the synagogue of Satan, the haunt for evil spirits, and the dwelling for demons. Thus, if we are in that place unknowingly, we must realize this quickly and come out of there quickly. Where should we go when we come out? Go to Zion quickly. There is no need to delay entering Zion. This is because Zion is God's dwelling place, and all of God's regulations and laws to serve God are observed there. Therefore, the place where God's regulations are observed is the temple of God. A place that is just named as God's temple or church cannot be the temple of God. Let us take an example. If there is a sign that reads church, but people play the Buddhist instrument and chant a Buddhist prayer, is it a church or a Buddhist temple? It is a Buddhist temple, not a church. How can we verify this? We can ask, what kind of ceremony are they holding there? We can easily discern the place through the regulations. Don't you agree? There are countless churches like the sand on the seashore. They all want to go to the kingdom of heaven, to worship God, and to serve God correctly according to God's regulations. However, if they keep Sunday worship and Christmas, which are not God's regulations in the Bible, and erect the cross, which God commands us not to do, could this place be a place to serve God? Even though this place is named as a church, 
we can understand clearly with the method of God's regulations that this is not God's temple to serve God and that they are not God's people, can't we? Let us take a look at Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. In chapter 2, verse 9, it says, I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are. Who are they? A synagogue of Satan. This means that the organization and their gatherings are of Satan, not of those that serve God. I believe that we must have such wisdom and know how to distinguish this matter. When the time comes, many false Christs and false prophets will arise and deceive even the elect. When it happens, please remember today's sermon and ask, what regulations are being kept in this gathering? In the temple of God, God's regulations must be observed. Isn't the temple the place where the God-revering ceremony is held according to God's laws and regulations? That is why God calls us God's temple. What did He put in us? Since God let us know His decrees, regulations, laws, and commandments to serve God, He said, Therefore you yourselves are God's temple. Let us turn to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. In verse 16, it says, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred, and you together are that temple. We are God's temple. Shouldn't God's regulation live within us? His laws be kept within us? And His decrees to serve God exist within us? Jesus also described Himself as the temple of God. Let us read John chapter 2, verse 19. In John chapter 2, verse 19, it says, Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was, what was the temple he had spoken of? It was his body. Then what did Jesus Christ, who is the temple, become the Lord of? In the book of Matthew chapter 12, Jesus says, For the Son of Man is, who is the Son of Man? Lord of the Sabbath. Also in the book of Luke chapter 4, Jesus let us know that keeping the Sabbath day is His custom. What must be kept in the temple? God's regulations must be kept in the temple. That is why Jesus described Himself as the temple. Today, God's people are also called the temple. What is the reason? What are they keeping? Only the place where God's regulations, decrees, and laws are kept can be called the temple of God. Here, in Zion, where you are now, the Sabbath day worship is being held. Likewise, the temple of God should be the place where God's regulations are kept regardless of location. Jesus, Apostle Paul, other apostles, and the saints of the early church all kept the Sabbath day. But nowadays, the churches do not keep the Sabbath day. With this one regulation alone, you can never enter the kingdom of heaven if you stay in such places. Also, plagues will come upon you. Come out of there quickly, my people. Can't we confirm the voice of God who proclaims this in Revelation chapter 18? In the temple of God, the regulation of the Sabbath day exists. 
Let us confirm this by going to Exodus chapter 20. In the temple of God, there must be God's regulations. God said that he will destroy those who only claim to be a temple without keeping God's regulations because they have defiled it. Let us read Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. How should we remember it? By keeping it holy. Whose regulation is this? This is God's regulation and law given by God. Then what should we do with these holy commands and laws in God's temple? We should observe them. Then the place becomes the temple of God, doesn't it? What is God's will behind establishing the Sabbath day? Just as a caterpillar changes into a butterfly as it sheds its skin, God changes the heavenly children, who are the heavenly sinners, into holy beings through every Sabbath day, even though we do not realize this. Let us turn to the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. The seventh day is the Sabbath day, right? Let us look at verse 3. Then God, what did he do? Bless the seventh day. God blessed the seventh day. Do you remember the scene in Deuteronomy chapter 28 where it says, you will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out? What kind of people will be blessed? They are those who keep all the commandments, decrees, and laws of God. Keeping the Sabbath day is also part of God's commandment, isn't it? We are blessed by keeping the Sabbath day. What else did God do with the Sabbath day and made it holy? Because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. We should be able to quickly distinguish between the dwelling place for demons and the dwelling place for God by looking at whether God's regulations are being observed or not. After we committed sins in heaven and were expelled to the earth, God allowed mankind the lifespan of 70 to 80 years. There is something that all mankind must do during that time. It is to learn how to receive the forgiveness of sins so that we can return to the kingdom of heaven. How can we return to the kingdom of heaven? We must find the path to heaven quickly. However, since sinners cannot find the path by themselves, whose help do we need? We need the guide who will lead us to the path to the kingdom of heaven. Who is the shepherd of our souls? God revealed this path to us and made us realize this path so that we could enter the kingdom of heaven. However, Satan not only deceived God's people in heaven, but also try to block the opportunity for them to return to the kingdom of heaven by deceiving them once more on the earth. Thus, what did Satan give to people instead of the Sabbath day? He has made Sunday a great and wonderful day in the eyes of others. Moreover, rather than the Passover, he has made Christmas a worldwide festival. He has made it seem amazing. Everyone, even though all of these things seem great and splendid for a moment, they are all lies that Satan is using, aiming to deceive people, aren't they? In the past, Elijah had a spiritual battle with the 850 prophets of Baal and Asherah on Mount Carmel to confirm whose God is the true God. What did all the prophets of Baal do according to the regulations of their God? They built an altar and worshipped their God, shouting, Baal, answer us, please answer us. However, there was no answer from Baal. 
Elijah repaired the altar according to the regulations and ordinances to serve God and even poured water into the trench. He let the Israelites come near to him and prayed to God. Then fire suddenly came down from heaven, licked up the water in the trench and burned up the sacrifice. We know this amazing history written in 1 Kings chapter 18. Even on Mount Carmel, those who worship Baal followed the rules of worshiping Baal, and Elijah followed the rules of serving God. Everyone, there are regulations to serve God. If we take a close look at the countless churches today, keeping worship services every week and what they call the temple, we can distinguish whether they are the temples of God that open the way of salvation, leading us to the kingdom of heaven, or the synagogue of Satan, can't we? That is why we must examine God's regulation diligently. We must know the regulation of the Sabbath day and the regulation of the Passover as well. We cannot see all sides of the spiritual world because our spiritual eyes are not open. However, God has allowed us to realize this world through the decrees, regulations, and ordinances to serve God. A temple without the Sabbath day is not a temple to worship God. They put the sign that shows that place is a church that serves God. However, they worship the sun god. Didn't the prophet Ezekiel explain it well? Let us take a look at Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 16. In chapter 8, verse 16, it says, He then brought me into the inner court of the house of the Lord, and there at the entrance to the temple, between the portico and the altar, were about 25 men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east. They were bowing down. To what were they bowing down? To the sun in the east. They claimed that they believe in God, and put the sign that shows it is a church outwardly. However, in reality, they are worshiping the sun god. Did God regard this as right? Let us read verse 17. He said to me, Have you seen this son of man? Is it a trivial matter for the people of Judah to do the detestable things they are doing here? Must they also fill the land with violence and continually arouse my anger? Look at them putting the branch to their nose. Therefore, I will deal with them in anger. I will not look on them with pity or spare them. Although they shout in my ears, I will not listen to them. Nowadays, people call the places as churches, but they worship the sun god. Sunday worship is an example. Christmas is another example. All these practices are for worshiping the sun god, not the way to serve God. God says, if you want to be saved and go to the kingdom of heaven, do not stay there. Otherwise, you will receive plagues. Then what should we do? God says, come out quickly, my people. Where does he tell us to go? He tells us to go to Zion. In the temple of God, there must be regulations to serve God. There must be the ordinance of God. We must find that place. We have found that place, haven't we? Where is Zion? Zion, where we have come today, is that very place. We have come to Zion prepared by God and the place where God's decrees, regulations, and ordinances are kept. We must follow the teachings of God the Father and God the Mother and be able to enter the eternal kingdom of heaven. It is prophesied that for this purpose, God will come to this earth again in the last days and teach us all the decrees, regulations, and ordinances to serve God, isn't it? Let us turn to Micah chapter 4, verse 1. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and peoples will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, 
Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that what may we do? We may walk in his paths. We will follow God's decrees, regulations, and laws that God will teach us. The law will go out. Where will it go out from? From Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God himself will come to teach us the law of the new covenant in the last days. Why will these things happen? After the first coming, Jesus ascended to heaven. God's decrees, regulations, and laws were kept on this earth until the 4th century. However, around the 4th century, all these regulations began to disappear one by one. The Sabbath day disappeared. The Passover disappeared. And all the laws of the new covenant of God began to disappear on the earth. According to Daniel chapter 7, who is prophesied to do all this? It is the one who stands against God. Who is he? It is written that the devil will change the set times and the laws. This means that he will destroy the decrees, regulations, and laws to serve God. After destroying them, he added the ordinance of worshiping the sun god. Instead of the Sabbath day, he added Sunday worship. He added Christmas in place of the Passover. He continued to add such lawlessness. This is the evil scheme of Satan, who tries to prevent the children of God, who sinned in heaven, and were cast down to the earth from returning to their eternal heavenly home. That is why we need to repent a lot now. Where is the place that God's decrees, regulations, and laws are being kept? Asking ourselves this question, we need to find that place. This place we must find is Zion, the Sabbath day, the Passover, and the new covenant are kept in Zion. Also, we have confirmed that the Church of God, established by the new name, is Zion. In Zion, the Holy Spirit and the Bride, who is God the Mother, are calling us by saying, Come. Which church is fulfilling all the prophecies in the 66 books of the Bible? If we properly understand God's regulations, we can find the temple of God. If we cannot distinguish between Sunday worship and the Sabbath day, we will never be able to distinguish between Zion, the temple of God, and Babylon, the dwelling for demons. Isn't it great that you and I have come to this place today? We are fully confident that we are in Zion. We should give thanks and glory to God. God came to this earth in the last days and restored the gracious regulation of the new covenant that Satan had destroyed and craftily changed in order to make us serve and worship him. He restored the Passover, the Sabbath day, all the regulations of the new covenant, and the baptism in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God has led us to the church that has faith in New Jerusalem Heavenly Mother and in Heavenly Father who came with the new name in the age of the Holy Spirit. God has led us to the church of God that has all this perfect truth. Then we just need to put the teachings into practice. Let us unite in harmony and follow the teachings given by father and mother. Also, no matter where God leads us, let us never doubt the fact that only His teachings are the way to heaven. By doing so, our path will be a wonderful path for us to return to our eternal heavenly home without leaving anyone behind. Let us have faith and march toward heaven with the hope for heaven, today, tomorrow, and forever. I hope you have received much grace through today's sermon. Thank you very much.